This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. What's up, everybody? I'm back for another episode of the Average Savage podcast. Our special guest today is Marcus Griffin. Marcus, how's it going? Doing well, my man. How you doing? Good, good. We finally got it scheduled. We're finally here. It took a couple <laughs> weeks, maybe months. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, man. It's, been, right. it's been hectic over here. Yeah, for sure. So I know previously you told me you were born in California, but you grew up in, in uh, Washington State. So people know not Washington, D.C. So what, yeah, what was it Washington like? State. Yeah. So what was it like just growing up uh, in Washington? I mean, for me, man, there's so many different people here, um, so many different ethnicities, races. I saw it's like a melting pot. Like I'm growing up knowing just so many different kinds of people. I had a lot of fun and unique experiences. And man, it's just been an honor because so many people out here want to help you and they want to see you do better. So I've definitely had a lot of people, you know, help me on my journey to get to where I am today. Okay, for sure. Now, growing up, uh, I know you played football. Um, did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I played baseball, basketball, I did wrestling. Uh, but I, baseball and football were like my two loves. You played baseball in high school? Yeah, well, so I was pretty good my whole life. Like, I was an all-star, played select, travel ball. Got to a point in high school where I realized, you know, they don't give out for scholars for baseball. So oh, yeah, yeah. I had to cut that one out and go focus on football. Actually, yeah, I just saw a video on that on YouTube and they, I mean, on Twitter, and they cut the scholarships in baseball from, like, I think, like, 17 to, like, 13 guys now. Something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man, I, I needed that full ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so all right, so you played football. Uh, like, when did when the when did the recruiting and like the offers start coming in? Like during high school. Yeah, so I would say like the, the actually it was like the day before my birthday, like my junior year. Um, signing day just happened. Like you know, it's early February, mid February. Signing day just happened, and then bang, then you know, they start offering the next wave, and I got an offer from Wazoo the day before my birthday. Mike Leach, baby, nice. come on. <laughs> That's dope. What about um? What about like previously? Maybe like when did you know you were like above average? I'd say. Honestly, I'd say I was pretty good as a kid, and then I'd say I got I got some bad coaching in junior high, and I could tell my game just wasn't the same. Um, honestly, I just felt like I just you know just went down, and then I transferred to Bellevue High School, and you know we got the best coaches. My coach won eleven state titles, countless dudes in the NFL college. Um, and that's when it really progressed. I got there my sophomore year and skyrocketed. I got you, got you. And then um, just the recruiting, back to the recruiting process, um, like how many offers did you have? And then like, what was it like trying to pick a, a school? Yeah, so I had like over 20 plus offers, four star, high school, American, both sides of the ball. Um, man, it was tough. Honestly, like when you're a 17 year old kid, you don't know a lot of things and everyone's lying to you, telling you how great you are and just nobody wants to really be honest. Yeah. So it was kind of hard. Um, I, you know, I had a couple commitments, was committed to Wazoo for a little bit, gave a couple silent commitments out, and then ended up going to Arizona just because I felt like with the class of guys I had, I had the best relationship. And still to this day, I still have a great relationship with all those dudes I played with. Gotcha. And then was there like a final two or three schools you were picking from? Uh, top five. Um, Arizona, Washington State, Cal, Mississippi State. And I said, I think I said Notre Dame. But yeah, Notre Dame. Okay, that's cool. It was a it was a random mix. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, what about what was your overall experience like at uh, Arizona? So, I mean, I think it was great for me. I mean, a lot of people like me, and you know, from all over the world, and I did some unique things. You know, being in Arizona, we're not too far to go from Cali or to Vegas or you know, go to Mexico. So I got to do a lot of cool and unique trips and experiences with with my teammates and friends. The football side of it was a little it was different. Um, I just the staff wasn't from the West Coast, and that that kind of played into a culture. They don't know how West Coast kids are and how we think and how we feel, so that was a little tough. But overall, I mean, it was a solid experience. They did everything they could to, you know, provide a first-class experience for us, and I felt like it was. We had a lot of, you know, financial help, a lot of academic help. Um, I think they did a pretty good job. I think just a couple of minor things they could have fixed, but other than that, it was a great, it was a great experience. But what, what was your most memorable game there? Oh, memorable. My, so I'll say my red shirt freshman year, we were like, it was the first year of the college playoff. We we're balling. We lost like maybe two games. We we're playing ASU for a spot in the Pac-12 championship. Also our rival. 
So the whole stadium was packed. The energy was there. We ended up clinching that game, going to the Pac-12 uh, championship. And if we would have won that, we would have went to the playoffs in the first year. So that environment was just nuts. You got you got parents fighting in the stands. You got people that just don't really like each other getting after it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Fun fact: I almost I I almost tried to transfer to Arizona State. Let's be thankful you didn't. <laughs> Um, and then uh, going into your – what was it, like your grad year, you, you transferred to Central Michigan, right? Yeah, so I had um, a relationship already with the staff out there. Coach John Bonamego, he's with the – who is he with? He's with the Rams now, the special teams coach. He had a huge NFL background. Um, honestly, for me, I had a couple of different options, Virginia, Oklahoma State, but it was about who would pay for my master's in full, and CMU offered me, offered me that, so I took it. Hey, that's smart. <laughs> Get those free degrees. Um, exactly. It says you wore number nine there. Is that true? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, that, that, was one of, that was one of my requests. <laughs> All right. You're a big man on campus, yeah, huh? That's Central Michigan. I, I, needed, I needed that nine piece. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you went in there, were like people like, oh, he, he's coming from like the Pac-12, like, oh, like he's really good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning – I saw it's like this. Michigan is a culture shock from the West Coast. It's the Midwest. Yeah. It's super different. So they don't really know too much. They just know I was a kid coming in. So in the beginning, everyone was trying to fill you out. But after that, you know, they were pretty cool. It's just different out there, man. Just the lifestyle and how people are. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm grateful they paid for my school and I got that master's. Yeah. So what did you study, like your undergrad and your master's? So my undergrad, I got a degree in human understanding and development. And then for my master's, I got a, I got a, a like an MBA, pretty much. Nice. I did some finance in there, but pretty much an MBA. Gotcha. And then, um, like after that, like what was, what did it look like after that? Like trying to pursue pro? Were, were you trying to get a job? Like what were you trying to do after that? Yeah. So I mean, I tore my labor when I was at Arizona, and I was trying to rehab that in the process of being a grad transfer. Ended up being able to rehab it. Played a season out there, kind of re-injured it. So when I got home, I wasn't really in the mindset of let's go train. Honestly, I met with this this is a great doctor, Dr. Greenway, and he fixed my shoulder in one session. And I was like, all right, well, I'm about to go train and committed to the next three months. Had a pretty solid pro day, honestly. Um, got a couple of couple opportunities, couple of looks, and then it just ultimately just didn't work out. And then I moved on, uh, ended up finishing school, and then went into a corporate sales job. And then uh, transitioning to what I'm doing now, I work at Forest Force Performance, where NFL gym based out of Seattle, um, where Adidas sponsored, and now, now that's what I do. Nice. So yeah, you weren't feeling the nine to five. I'm not feeling it, but you know, just the culture isn't there. Yeah. I think everyone they want you to be a robot in a big company. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it has its perks. You got you know the good money, good vacation days, but it just didn't feel competitive like they sold like they sold it to me, and uh, I just didn't feel like there was any room to grow immediately. Yeah, for sure. Now tell me where you're at now. I know you uh, just tell me where the location is and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're in we're in Bellevue, Washington. We're like 15 minutes from Seattle. Um, we're pretty close to you know downtown Bellevue, which is five minutes away, and you know we're in a 20,000 20, square foot facility handling business. Who? So who's who's training out there with you? So well, we got a pretty big NFL list. Um, Bobby Wagner, DK when he's in town, KJ White, obviously Buddha Baker. You know, my boy behind me, uh, Miles Jack, when he's in town, uh, Miles Gaskins, Savannah Med. It's pretty big, man. If you, yeah. if you came here, you see all these jerseys on these walls, and that, that tells you who's here. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Like, what, it, what has it been like just, like, going from a player to, like, a trainer? Man, I'm not even really a trainer, to be honest. I'm on the admin side. Like, oh. I, deal with, I deal with more of the back end stuff. The good, the fun stuff, though. Um, no, it's been unique. I mean, I get to wear shorts every day. I get to wear sweats. Yeah. So, you know. And that side of it, I'm always comfortable, always relaxed, but it's just fun to do something I have a passion okay. for. Um, you know, be around people that I've known for some time and just constantly grow and do some new stuff. So you're the business guy out there. I'm not the business guy. I'm one of the I'm one of them though. I'm one of them. I'm working on it. I'm one of them. All right, all right. And then uh yeah, like what are what are your future goals? Uh in football, um, your career path, like what is, what's what's your ultimate goal? So to give a little background about what I do here, I'm the director of recruiting for Trent. So Olam and Dumont College just called me, you know, talk about our kids, get them offered. Um, I'm also in a performance evaluator. So just like in how you go to college your first week, they break you down, you know, you're this fast, you're this strong, you're this weak or whatever. 
I do that as well with some of the athletes that come through here. And then on the other thing, I'm an, I'm the Adidas liaison. So any project or any gear that goes through me and uh, I'll okay it before it gets here. Yeah. So, all right. So you're doing a little bit of everything then. Yeah. I just want, you know, I just want to try a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Um, ultimately I want to go to college and I want to go be a recruiter. I feel okay. like I, I did a great job of that while I was a player. And I just feel like the role that I'm in is going to propel me to, to go do that. Yeah. But the end goal is going to be a GM. I want to be a GM of the NFL team. All right. Yeah, that's dope. Um, all right. You ready for some fun questions? Let's get it. All right. What do you like to do in your free time? <laughs> My, what's free time? No, nah, but uh, <laughs> I like I, mean, I like watching LeBron dominate. Um, I play the PS5. Man, I just really, I really enjoy going to dinner with my boys, kicking and traveling. You know me, I like to travel. You see that all the time. Um, but that's pretty much it. All right, so you got to give me your NBA predictions, then. Man, Lakers in five. And we're not just talking about now. I'm talking about the finals. <laughs> yeah, all, right. Nah, I mean, all right, who do you think the Lakers are going to play in the finals? They should play the Nets. Yeah. The Nets. I mean, the Nets are the dominant force. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but I mean, you gotta look at it like this: like they got three, a three-headed, you know, three monsters over there. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's gonna hurt them is defense and injuries. So you know, I hope they're all healthy for the finals. But LeBron finna finna drop forty, and we're finna go to LA and celebrate. For sure. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask you. Um, what advice would you give to a younger player like trying to get a D one scholarship? Man, be realistic right. with yourself. Um, be realistic because. In your head, you might envision yourself as a as a D one pro as a D one prospect as a senior, and you know you might be a freshman. I'd say humble yourself. You know, go to the local camps, go to the smaller schools, build your build your resume. You know, with coaches that have seen you from a young age until you know it's time to go, and just um, you know grind, be committed to the process. Don't be on social media gassing yourself up when you're not really working, and uh, you know film don't lie. So yeah. if you a dude, we're gonna see it, and if you a dude, I'm gonna call you. We're gonna yeah. get you in here. <laughs> for sure what about like uh you're you're younger than me like what's the difference has been like so say your senior year uh, uh high school so like now like seeing kids getting recruited in like social media oh it's it's a whole different phase so when i was in high school twitter just started to get popping yeah. now now you have like instagram you got facetime <laughs> these coaches have like a ton of different ways to connect with you yeah. and honestly them back then they weren't even allowed to text you they could just call you and facebook message yeah. you so like, you know, if I was a kid now, I'm getting all these texts and, you know, I'd be super overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, there's more eyes everywhere, seven on seven camps, combine events. So there's a lot more eyes everywhere. Um, kids, the thing I would say is you think these coaches don't see this? They see everything. They got partnership deals with all these film companies to get what you did. So you might've had a seven on seven practice that was bad and Oregon might've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll say that. So that everyone sees everything. Gotcha. And then back to back to the fun questions because I forgot about those ones. But um, uh, what else? Do you, like, what other things do you like to do in your uh, free time? Do you play video games or anything? Yeah, man. Play the PS Five. Play Two K <laughs> Madden. We're on um, Netflix. When Netflix has some good shows going on, they're struggling right now though. Um, just really chill, man. I mean, yeah. we're here. Like, we're here pretty much all day so when I get home I just want to kick back eat some good food and just get you know recoup for the next day yeah for sure now we mentioned social media what, what's your favorite platform I'm a Twitter head you know this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Twitter head uh no nah, I just I just feel like people are the most authentic on Twitter I feel like everyone's pretty you know pretty funny pretty honest I feel like Instagram is you know all cap uh no <laughs> pun intended <laughs> but I just feel like everyone's flexing I mean like, look, if I didn't have to use Instagram for, for myself or for my brand or for the gym, I wouldn't, yeah. but it's necessary today. Yeah, definitely. All right, my last question. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions for you? Oh, okay. What do you think separates yourself from from others that do what you do? <laughs> oh, easy. Consistency. That's mm. it. Consistency. That's it? That's it. It's a one-man show? That's it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's, okay. No, it's funny you ask that because, um, like, I always, I always get this question when I'm on interviews. And so I forgot the exact question, but it's always like, but I always see, like, since I started 10 years ago, like, I've seen people 
start either like clothing brands or companies or websites or whatever. And just maybe they do it a month, even up to a year, maybe two years. And then they just stop and that's it. And then they give up. Even uh, people I went to Whoa. school, with, I'm sure you went to school with a lot of people that are, went, uh, got sports management degrees and don't work in sports at all. Like a lot of people, same thing. Like they just, they just stop trying. Well, here's the thing. Like, so for me, yeah, I look at it like this. You got to pay your dues at some point in yeah. time. So like for you during this time span, you paid your dues right now. I'm paying my dues. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you have to, you always have to give that time where you're not the guy where you're learning how to do it. So when you get your opportunity, you can maximize it. I mean, obviously me and you, we've had a relationship for a couple of years, mm-hmm. you know, you've done nothing but grown flourish. You know, you went from a couple pro athletes to, Hey man, you got a whole roster, every for sport, sure. every sport, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that's, that's the thing. And I think that's the thing I see now, like, even with these kids, like just recruiting or high school, just be consistent. A lot of kids fall off. If they don't get that love, that instant gratification, yeah. it goes to their head and they're just head casted. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing that I think the <laughs> back to like Instagram and fi- like fake selling, it's just like, go get a degree and you're going to get a good job or whatever, but no, you're starting at the bottom again. Like people don't really, I don't think people realize that that much. A degree doesn't mean you're going to get a good job. It just means you're going to get an opportunity to yeah. get a good job. It's really all, you know what it is, networking. It's yeah, uh, sure. it's the communication. It's, you know, somebody voucher for you, you know, like, like, like I said, you got that, you got the interview from my friend. So I'm yeah. vouch for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's trust. That's how you build networks though. Oh, funny story about that. She, I told you already, but I'll tell it on air. So she told me, <laughs> she told me it was like, why is Marcus hitting me up? Like, I thought it was like, he was just joking. And then he was like, Oh, and then we're on an interview with her. So then it was for real. She, hey man, she, she appreciate I gotta, it. Not everybody can know what I be doing or who I know. I got to keep you tucked away, man. You too big time for, for everybody to know about. Um, one final thing I wanted to touch on, on this side, uh, you know, summer's coming. The NCAA is allowing us to finally take visits. We got a summer tour kind of coming up Tuesday this week. Uh, me and about 10 kids from here and my boss and, uh, and our player personnel director, Ryan Clary, will be on the road. First stop, Nick Saban, baby, we coming. Tuscaloosa, we got some boys. That just shows you the level of kids we got over here. First stop. Yeah. We got to hit Auburn after that, Georgia. We come back. Following week, kids go to Texas. Following week, I take the kids to L.A. We got to go see SC, ASU, go see my alumni, U of A, and then circle circle out to a few more schools, and then we're done. Then July's all grind. That's, yeah, that's dope. Well, Marcus, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, can you let the listeners know where to follow you on social media? Of course, of course. Yo, Rillin Z96 on all platforms. And if you can't find me, holler at my man PG. He'll, he'll point you in the right direction. <laughs>